This is Azeroth Rediscovering. My name is Brett. My name is Jess. And we're going to talk about many, many things today, Jess. We first, are. First up, we have uh, Orgrimmar. We were headed to Orgrimmar in our last... Uh, during our last episode, we were headed to Orgrimmar, and um, we made it in there. And we made it in there via the uh, Bad Handler. And this is the first capital city you have seen. And I was kind of wondering uh, what you had thought of that. And um, I was excited for you to see this capital city. Um, it's one of the most important spots in WoW. And uh, the population is kind of weird now because you have these people that are in your city, but they're not necessarily on your server. So there was a, a server merge at some point, and now you will see these other people that aren't in your that aren't in your on your server and i i'm not sure how much that really limits the you're interacting with them because you can still whisper them and they can see your 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 chats and everything so i'm not really sure what that does i don't know if you can be in a, a guild with them but uh it it seems kind of weird seeing these other people um in in your same city and i'm guessing that blizzard has you know, made preparations for that and in, in the sense of what you can do with them and uh, if you can be in a clan or a guild with them and um, if you can raid with them and all those kinds of things. I would imagine you can. Otherwise, it would be really strange just seeing these people you couldn't really, you know, do anything with. So before we get too ahead of ourselves here, um, I need you to clarify something because I'm a little bit confused. So... When we first went to Orgamar, I know we, we got off our... What did we fly in? On a bat or on a, a wind rider, right? I think it was a bat. I mean, they're the same I thing, pretty much. I think it was much. a wind rider. But either way, I'm making that up. I don't know. Um, either way, we got off and I saw, you know, I saw a bunch of purple people, which that means, to me, that means those are actual players, not computers. So uh, that was the first time I had really experienced... That was the only time I've experienced more than, like, two other real people in the game. So it was really surprising to me. So, all of the, we are on Smolder Thorn. That's our server. Yes. And all of those people are not on Smolder Thorn as well. Right. Like, I would say a majority of them are not on Smolder Thorn. Okay. So, before, when you're saying that that's interesting to you... Are you saying that previously, when you would go to Orgamar, you would only see people from Smolderthorn on it? Correct. Was it still as busy and crazy as it was for us? I would say so, yeah. So why isn't it, like, how is it even, f how can you see things? Like, I mean, there's so many people on it now that, like, sometimes it's hard, like, sometimes when we would go look for a quest <coughs> or something, uh... Like, there's so many people gathered around one thing that it's difficult to see. Why isn't it even more so if everybody's in there, if you're saying it was this busy when it was Smolder Thorn? When it was only Smolder Thorn? Do you understand? Uh, I do. I do understand what you're saying. And I'm guessing that it's because... It's because that the population has died down. Uh, I know at one point WoW was up to um, you know so many million subscribers, gotcha. and I believe that has dwindled. And I believe that was when they merged certain servers. I, just, I shouldn't say that's when they did it, but I imagine the cause of them merging certain servers, um, certain battle groups together was was to combat this. That way, you felt like you could stay on your own server, but you could. Uh, you could still feel like the world was heavily populated. And I don't know what kind of numbers they aim for, you know, if they want, uh, you know, 5,000 people on a server or, you know, if they need uh, 2,000 people on a server. Like, it's kind of hard to say. But, um... So, hold on. So, when, when you used to be back in the old, like, is that Vanilla WoW? Is that what you would reference it as, Vanilla WoW? Uh, I mean, even, I would say, I wasn't playing when there were other people in my Orgrimmar. No, I so. meant, I'm going back to when it was just uh, 
Smolder Thornton people in Orgrimmar. Does that limit, like, if you put something in the auction house, only... So the only people in Orgrimmar were people on Smolder Thorn. So only they could see your auction, or was it... It yes. wasn't available to everybody. Correct. That's interesting. Um, that's really interesting to me. I don't... Uh, like, it just seems like it really would limit how the, like, I'm used to seeing it like this, and I don't really know what it would be like if it was just, like, I don't really know the difference between the population, but for us to have as many people as we have now, and it be the whole, assuming every server, or maybe even it's limited to, like, 20 servers, you know, it could be that, right? It, it might just be, like, different groups of servers are allowed in it. Yeah, so I remember when I used to look at the battlegrounds, they had something called battle groups, and what okay. that what that was was a collection of of servers or realms um, that were they would go into the battleground together. So you were with I want to say maybe ten other realms, and I th I would imagine that's probably what they merged together because they had already kind of you know put those together gotcha. um, and they had already had them grouped. So I'm guessing that's what they did. Um, and I really don't know exactly what happened with that, but, but that makes, that makes the most sense to me. Gotcha. So we go into Orgrimmar. That was just kind of catching up to what it was now for both of, well, for me, it's all new, but for you, it was kind of different. Um, once we got into Orgrimmar, I had to pick, my profession. Is that correct? Is that when I did that? I believe so. Uh, you picked... Um, I believe you went ahead and picked... There was a profession trainer there. I don't know if we saw one at Sinjin Village or not. I don't think we did. I think we or waited. Uh, I think we waited. Um, and that's when I, I picked leather working. Actually, you know what, man? I think we did do that already. Was there... I can, I can picture a... Uh, I can picture an orc profession trainer at Razor Hill. Yeah, I think you're right. And I actually, I think we even have, I, we briefly discussed that uh, we picked our professions. But I got to visit trainers um, right. here. And uh, when did I learn cooking? Did I learn cooking when I picked leather working or did I learn cooking in Orgamar? No, so cooking is like a secondary profession. It doesn't count towards one of them. I think you learned that back in, uh, I think back in Sinjin Village is when you learned that. And um, this, uh, but but you did go to the trainer and yeah, you yeah. you leveled up quite significantly. Yeah, I did, and um, that's been pretty cool because when we were going through Sinjin Village and. Um, you know, I, there were a lot of, even, like, right outside of Orgamar, just kind of running around without you when you would be unavailable to play with me, and I didn't want to quest, cause for the record, I don't know if people know that, but we're doing, we're pretty much not questing individually, we're doing everything together, so if you're not available to play, I go out and skin and hunt, and uh, I've learned fishing, so sometimes I'll fish, so I, I kind of gather you know, food and leather when, uh, when you're not playing with me. So I've, I've been able to super level up my, my cooking and even my skinning. Um, I've been able to do that. So what else did we do in Orgrimmar? I think, uh, so Orgrimmar, I did want to mention that during Cataclysm, uh, Orgrimmar changed. People used to the you're you're now familiar with the bank. You come in the front, and the bank is on the left side, and, or, and you go to the right, and the auction house is on the right side. Now the auction house pretty much stayed in the same spot, but the bank, uh, the bank used to be straight ahead, and just be kind of a round hut that was just straight ahead when you walked in, and it, it was near the auction house. Um, it was pretty close. And that was kind of like an iconic place because you could run up the ramp to the side of the bank and you could jump on the, the, the roof of the bank. And that was kind of like a meeting spot for people. They would say, uh, you know, like wanting to trade 
this item or wanting to sell this item, meet me on top of Orgrimmar Bank or, you know, meet me on top of Bank. Org Bank, that's what it would say. <laughs> so an, uh, an a enchanter might be selling some enchantment that a lot of people need and like doing or maybe they're leveling enchantment and they need, uh, you know, if someone brings them the materials to do the leveling, they'll do the level, you know, they'll enchant it for free. Uh, just as long as they provide the materials. And then you can tip them if you see fit. Like, sometimes people did, sometimes people didn't. And so that was always a thing, like, meet on top of Org Bank. And now, um, I don't know that that happens anymore. Now that people can... You didn't used to be able to fly in Orgrimmar. So now that you can do that, um, I think that now that you can fly and now that the bank has moved over to the left side, it's not really the central hub anymore... Um, people don't, I don't think people do that. So yeah. That's and actually before we hit, uh, we went into Orgrimmar at like level, uh, maybe 13. Is that, is that about right? Like, yeah, I think we were actually a little bit less, a little bit less. So yeah, we were still nine or so we were still under 20, which is the point of my statement here is that, uh, we would have to get. Your roommate actually plays WoW, and because we were under 20 and we had a free account, we couldn't group together. We would have to have somebody group us, and once we made it to Orgrimmar, that's where we would like we would ask him to come group us up, because right. um, we couldn't do it ourselves. And, and sometimes, like, man, we would try to talk to other players in the game and get them to group us, and they would ignore us. Yes, yeah, sometimes, uh, like, I actually, would do... all the time, they ignored us. <laughs> I think we got, I thought we got someone once or twice. Um, maybe once, but I know, okay. like, I remember just sitting here and you would be talking to people and I, you know, I, at that point, I even still, I'm not going to lie, I still don't really know how to talk to people, but like, I don't even know how to communicate to people, um, that aren't you, like, as far as like in my party or like whispering or whatever. So I would just be sitting there watching you try to ask people to put us together and people would just like. We got one to do it, and then they even, like, stayed in our group with us for a little bit, and then they, like, they left us. Right. And you can't, so when we were on the trial account, you can't whisper anyone, and you can't invite anyone. So you can't even do a yell or talk in general chat. The most you can do is a say. Or you can do party chat if you happen to be able to get into a party. So what what we would do is ask people to group us. That way we could do quests together. I think we covered that before, but... Um, yeah, I would have to get my roommate to invite us cause he has an actual paid account. Um, but I'm do... saying once we got to Orgamar, it was like, it became our place for him to meet. We were actually having him meet us near the Zeppelins. I think that was kind of our spot for him. To uh, meet he did us. meet us once there, but, um, I think that was to help us with the, uh, art because you don't actually have to, he can invite us from anywhere he is. So. He, um, he doesn't. Oh yeah. Yeah, he he just met us that one time by the Zeppelin, so he could help us with the uh, the the art for the uh, podcast. So, oh yeah. Yeah, he did help us with that. We screenshot. had a photographer, a wow <laughs> photographer for us. Like he yes. he placed us correctly. I don't know if anybody that's listening to the podcast, you guys should really look at the image because it was a lot of effort to get us <laughs> positioned, and I'm holding the map and. Brett's arms are all crazy because he's lost, and there was a lot of thought that went into that, and we had a, a photographer special for it, so. Uh, yeah, so, um, I, when we first got to Orgrimmar, like, it was important that we went to the bank and to the auction house first, because I have never seen those. And we yeah. had accumulated some stuff you wanted me to auction. Right, um, and, and, and I... I... I knew you, you know, I, I knew this would be kind of another big, like, a big thing to kind of take in because it's a big city. I mean, I don't, I don't even know where half the stuff is there. You know, I know where the bank, the auction house, and maybe a couple other things because those are the popular things. But um, the more I play, obviously, the more layout, the more of the layout I'm kind of getting, um... But yeah, I thought the auction house would be like a big thing, and and it was cool. Like I thought you might be excited to like make make some gold, 
Um, yeah, um, the first things that we put. What did I put? It was a. It was a recipe, or not even a recipe. What was it? Do you remember? Yeah, I think you were trying. Um, so we had gotten these bind on equip, or I get. I guess they're bind on use, bind on some. There anyway. They're the recipes. Um, there was one for like a greater. Uh, it wasn't greater strength, it, greater growth or mighty growth. It was something I thought that made you big. It was for a uh, for alchemy, which we neither one of us are alchemists. And um, and then she also got the uh, savory deviate delight. That's which, what I was. That's right. the one I couldn't remember. Yeah, which I thought might be worth some money because I thought they used to kind of be, but I saw them posted for like one gold and stuff, so they must not really be worth anything. But they let you. Um, they let you cook the fish that turns you into a ninja, um, or they used to. Um, if they removed that from the game, that'd be really awful, but I doubt they had. But yeah, I think you get either a ninja or a pirate, so those are uh, that's a cool cooking thing to have. Right, so um, we put that stuff up for auction. Uh, like, I, I had been holding on to it. At this point, I had, like, one, maybe two bags. My bags were always full because I was always hunting and gathering goods. Um, so I was excited to go to the auction house and, like, I like sell some stuff. And then I put these things up, and it was like... I, I put these things up. I learned how to do it. I went through all this effort, and none of my stuff sold. <laughs> like, I don't think... I didn't sell anything that first time in the auction house. Oh, wow. I didn't I didn't realize that. Yeah, That's it was kind of a disappointment. Actually, um, that stuff I sold yesterday was the first... Like, yesterday, real time, um, was the first thing I sold. First thing that was oh. actually accepted in the auction house. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and that'll happen. Like a lot of low level stuff won't sell. Like the majority of stuff won't sell. It's it's the you just kind of gotta know. Like most of the cloths will sell, and uh, you know some of the the ore will sell, the leather will sell, the stuff that's used used in professions will generally sell. But like if you just get some random, you know, green item that's like sort of. Sword of the Owl, or something stupid, Staff of the Owl. Um, that's probably not going to sell, and you should probably just vendor it. There's, there's really no reason to mess with the auction house. Because it's that. quite a process, honestly. Like it's quite a process to to figure out what's worth what and how to price it and undercutting and it, like at level thirteen, I have nothing anybody wants. So, like. It, it was it was cool to learn, but it like it was pretty useless to me at that point. Um, but it was nice to go to the bank. We still we after we finished at the auction house, we went over to the bank, and I got to get rid of some some stuff that I maybe didn't want to actually sell, but I I didn't want to have to carry around all the time. I liked I liked that part a lot, and now I feel confident in going there without you, and that's also pretty cool. Yeah, we had a lot of uh, storage issues for a while or, or she, she her bags were filling very frequently because i think she was holding on to some things that she didn't need to hold on to because she thought maybe they might be valuable whereas i was i had the more uh i had more knowledge to know what i could sell and and just not hold on to but i did get um i did give us each uh i think three 16 slot bags so that helped out greatly with our storage space. Now I know uh, the maximum. I think you can get something like thirty slot bags now. So a oh, six, wow. yeah, a sixteen slot bag is really nothing uh, now. But it was uh, it was much better um, back when those were like the maximum levels um, or one of the top bags. Man, even like even real time again. Like, how big of a bag do we have right now? We have, we have, uh, how many bags can you hold? Three, four additional, I think. Four so, additional. Yeah, so we, those are all 16 slot bags. So we have four 16. Is that all we have, or do we have one main one or something like that? We well, have, yeah, you have, a, you have a backpack, and then you have... How many does our backpack hold? 16 as 16. well. 16. So it, we have 80 slots. Um... So if I had th four 30 slots, like, <laughs> the 80 slots, like, because we were playing the other day, and they were kind of full. Like, my, and I was, like, I can't imagine having 
Right. Four thirty slot bags because it, it just a bigger purse means more junk. Like I'm a girl, that's how it happens. Big purses just that doesn't mean right. like that just means you gather more garbage. So uh, and wow, it's the same thing. Those are just purses. Yeah, but you can um you know, you can store more stuff and dump. It's just like a little quality of life kind of improvement. It's Yeah, for sure. I'm just talking about the fact that like if you go quest for you know, a few levels, and then you go look at your bag. It's like it's so much to sift through to figure out what's garbage and what you need to keep, and that's just a lot of stuff. And I, I, I mean, I'm experiencing that now. So if it were more, it'd just be more stuff to look at. More stuff. More well, stuff. and you won't have to worry about those till we get into Legion, and that'll be quite a while. But um, man, I don't think so. I think we're like <laughs> we are. I think um, we're probably on on track to get there like next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, not really. Yeah. But like within the month, I think that's a feasible goal. Right. Yeah, we are moving along very quickly, which we will be discussing uh later on in the show because um we do have to uh make some changes to how how things are going, but we'll talk about that later. Uh we is this all about Orgrimmar? Uh, we want to cover is there I'm trying to think if there's anything no, more there's there's something there's something else that happened so while we were in Orgamar we were doing um some of the war chief command quest we were just doing I mean they were little at that point but we were doing quests and we ended up spending enough time in Orgamar that we uh well actually after Orgamar we went to northern barons right right um I think that was our level like 10 through 13, give or take, maybe 15? Uh, yeah, probably somewhere around there. So, uh, 15 was probably more like Crossroads. Okay. So, uh, from Orgrimmar, we did we did a little bit of questing, and, I mean, that's cool and it's exciting, but I kind of want to skim over it to get to a big thing, and I, I know you know what I'm talking about because this <laughs> is exciting for me. So we'll briefly talk about about Northern Barons and Crossroads, um, so that we can, like, I would like to still make it to, to my, this favorite thing I've done at this, this point in the game, um, in this episode, if you think we can, we can handle it. Yeah, yeah, um, we're gonna try to get as far as we can in this, um, we're kinda gonna do, um, and I should have mentioned this probably at the beginning of the show, but, um, we're gonna kind of do a, a little bit of catch up on um not the Heinz kind but um <laughs> catching up uh as far as where we actually are in the game because what's happening is we're leveling way faster than we have the time to record the episodes for and we want to be able to talk about stuff that we just did not stuff that we did like you know seven or eight days ago. Uh, well, and also a big part of it is that we were we were doing pretty much three or four levels per episode. And now, because we have, we have equipment and we've got... Uh, we, we, since we started, since even past where we are right now in Orgrimmar, we, we did a refer a friend bonus, which is, they say triple. I don't even think that's true. I think it's one and a half, but whatever. I it's, think we each get one and a half, which they call triple. Right, but, but that's not, that's I deceptive. Don't, don't, <laughs> that's not triple XP. Yeah, that's one that's... and a half per person XP. <laughs> but whatever, since we're always playing together, questing together, getting XP together, we're, we're not doing, you know, we can, we can progress six levels a day. Um, and we're not, you know, we're, we don't record every day. So we were, we were keeping up with it for a second. And then all of a sudden it's like, we didn't record for three days and we progressed 25 levels. And I mean, there's this big thing I want to talk about has a lot to do with that. Um, so it's just a matter of us getting caught up to the level we are now and what we're doing now because there's some stuff that has gone on that's it's just dumped XP on us like crazy. And I like I think that's really cool. Um I don't know if it's always gonna be like that, but I I like being able to say what level I am in this game. It makes me so, feel yeah, good about myself. We're we're gonna brush over some of the levels and um 
that that wasn't originally what we had planned to do like she just said um so it's it's kind of it's going to change the format a little bit of the show but um we do want to get caught up um so let's talk about the uh northern barons so this was um levels 10 to 13 um now there was a farm we visited and uh it it was pretty neat because we ha- I remember there was a quest there that um you could drag um I remember you had to go out and you had to catch this razor mane, which is this little, like, pig, like, like bipedal, quite, or, bi, yeah, is that what they're called, where they walk on two legs, a bi, biped, bipedal, something uh, like that? Y- um, yeah, anyway, this, say, yeah, this, this kind of humanoid looking pig, um, or a boar, and you had to catch him, and then you had to drag him, like, with some rope back to the, uh, thing, and I thought, I thought that was really cool, back, you had to drag him back to the, some kind of cage or pen, um, Do you know the to, name of this quest off the top of your head? I don't, but I imagine if you um, maybe click on the Northern Barons link, you might be able to find it. Uh, maybe not. I yeah, remember I, what you're talking about. I remember doing it. I just, <clears throat> um, I can't remember the name off the top of my head either. Yeah, and, and I don't think it's that important to find that name. But um, no. So we had that farm, and then... Um, the the next quest would have us writing a codo to the next spot. And this was kind of re reengaging that flow that I really liked when we started out and it, it had stopped us. It, the, the, the flow, remember it, it kind of came to a halt and it was just like swim over to Sinjin village. And I, I just, I thought that was so abrupt and strange. So, uh, we ended up going, um, we ended up taking a Kodo to the next spot, which I believe was a crossroads. And that was kind of, actually, that was kind of a tough quest. We had trouble, uh, we had a lot of trouble mounting on that Kodo, and it was because there were a couple other real-life players, and there weren't, like, we had to wait for them to spawn, and while we were trying to figure out how to get on them, like, someone would run up and take them from us. That quest took us a little bit to do. It was kind of hard. Yeah, that one was was weird, because we, we were always trying to take the same quest at the same time, and so, you know, one of us has to take it first and, you know, maybe my Kodo pops up first, but she hops on it. And then, so I'm like, well, what do I do? And then like my Kodo didn't appear though, because one had just appeared for her. So like, it kind of creates these, like, I don't know if you'd really call them bugs, but it's, it's kind of a, a weird situation that, that can be, can be troublesome if you don't really know what's going on. And right. with with her being new and me not really seeing any quests like this where you had to ride these things around, then it was kind of strange. Um, we had to <clears> defend. We actually had... It wasn't even... It wasn't just a ride on the Kodo. We, remember, we had to... Uh, there were people to trying shoot. to attack us, and we had to protect the Kodo while he transported us. We had to shoot people away from us. While, I mean, I say people. They weren't humans, but... We had to defend the Kodo while he took us to the next point, which I thought was a nice little touch because you don't do that, um, you know, when you're when you're flying or when you're on the the Wind Riders or anything, and you just get to hang out. But this was actually like an interactive travel, and I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, you had to you had to like shoot them off, and and uh, there was like a, a a ranged attack, and then there was like a melee attack if they jumped up on you, and yeah. Yeah, and that that was pretty cool. Um, so we get to the kind of the infamous crossroads. This is a, a pretty well known WoW area, uh, as, ex, um, especially for the Horde. Um, I mean, even, I think even Alliance kind of know of it because they would um, the high level. If you were maximum level Alliance, you could kind of get into this low area and you're tough enough to survive like all of the attacks and stuff. And like from the NPCs, the guards that might attack you, you can still survive it. And and then you can also kill like you can kill um, the players. And I, I can remember on more than one occasion, like, um, you know, people typing in general chat, like uh, Alliance has taken over crossroads and, like everyone's dead. Like you can't get any quest. The wind rider's dead. You can't fly out. Uh, they killed everyone, and you're just like, well, uh, you know, what do I do? Like, I don't want to run somewhere else in quest. I guess I'll just wait for them to leave, or like, you know, I I don't even know if you could quest anywhere else at that point because so far there's been a very kind of specific path you've been taking. I'm and I'm sure there's other level 
you know, 15 zones, but uh, it would be a big pain to get to them. So that really wasn't an option. Um, well, yeah, because at level 15, you haven't discovered ways to get to many other places yet. You still have to, like, you have right. to go through it to get to the places, to discover the flight paths, to get to those places via flying. So it, it's hard in the beginning. Right. That is true. Um, there are some quests in here. Um, we're going to, I think we're going to skip over those. Um, because again, we're trying to get caught up and I would really like to, uh, maybe focus on, on where we are now. So, um, through the crossroads, um, we did get a quest, uh, to head over to Ratchet. Ratchet is a goblin city to the east and there's a, a dock, um, there's a dock on the east side, and so neither one of us had a mount, but um, Jess said something that she had another, um, she had, had a new icon on her bar, and I was thinking, um, you know, she said by her cat, she said there was another icon, and I was like, oh, that's probably her travel form, so... I guess she clicks it and I see this stag, um, which I was really surprised because I was expecting a cheetah. I hadn't seen this stag before. And I was, uh, I think it's a moose, but whatever you say, um, it's a, it's a, a moose hoof that I've got on my screen and it's, it looks like a moose. Um, but they also don't call zebras and wow zebras, so they don't play by the rules. So I'm sure it's called a stag, but it's a moose. Okay, maybe it's not a stag. I don't know what it is. It is a large woodland animal. <laughs> and I said, I think I said out loud, I wish I could just ride you to Ratchet. And as she rode by... I kind of walk towards her because she was about to pass me and I mouse over her in this green like vehicle, like get in a vehicle arrow pops on just like the one for the Kodo pops on. And I right clicked on her and my, my priest jumps up and gets on top of, on top of, uh, the Druid and she just starts taking off writing, and you guys can't see this. You can't but see I'm his using, hands, but I wish you could, because I'm it's... using my right hand as the druid, and then my two fingers as my priest, and I am I am uh, displaying how we rode to Ratchet, and I was it very. It was a excited. human riding a moose. That's what happened. I was yes. a moose. He was a human, and I was a troll. But yes, well, whatever. Human. I was a hu- I was a humanoid. Uh, yeah, but we rode, we rode there and it was so nice because her, 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 um, her travel form, I think was going, what, 65, 60, uh, okay, 65, was it maybe 60% or so, um, faster, um, and it was, it was really, really nice, um, and, and we could just go there and I didn't even have to control anything and I could hop off whenever I wanted to and, um, it was really great, um, Brett, you've made, uh, You've made a mistake that's hurting my feelings because I was very much looking forward to something tonight and you have, you've just pretended like it wasn't even a big deal. Oh man, I think I... Because at level 16, Druids acquire Traver form, which is what we're discussing right now, but something happened at level 15 that was really cool. At level 15... We, we went into. Well, you shut up. At okay. level fifteen, take it. Take we it. <laughs> well, we were we were we were just questing. Um, I was none the wiser to what was about to happen, and we we leveled up to level fifteen, and um, a thing popped up on the screen saying that I like I don't know the words like I am qualified to enter. Uh, Rage Fire Chasm and Dead Minds, which meant nothing to me. Um, but Brett was like, "Oh my God, we can do!" And he just accepted. He like invited us to this thing, 
and told me to pick up, and I picked a, I didn't pick a healer. What did I pick? I picked damage. That's what I do. Yep. Um, and, you know, it takes a while for us to queue, and we're out, and I'm like, okay, what is this? And he's like, you just got to see you. Just just follow us. Just follow me. Just follow us. Well, it'll be okay. And I'm like, I, I had no idea what I was doing. And so our first instance, we went in our first instance. Is that what it is? Yeah, is instance or a dungeon. Dungeon. Um, and and this is where the game has taken a, an abrupt change in in pace pace for us because at level fifteen you can enter those two dungeons. At seventeen you can enter Wailing Caverns, and at eighteen you can enter Shadowfang Keep. So uh, we did. We did uh, Rage Fire was our first one, and it leveled us an entire level. But then we did Dead Minds, and it leveled us an entire level. So then we could do Wailing Cavern. And like before, we knew it. We did all these things. And we were level twenty, and then we had to pay for the game. Like it was like we. It just happened so quickly uh, that, like, in one night we did these things where we were just playing and then we, we did these instances. And, and that's not even talking about the actual event of instances themselves. It's just how quickly leveling up happened um, to a point where, like, we, we got out of it. We quested one more quest, I think, after we did Shadow and, and then it was like, oh, you're level 20. You Nothing counts. And so we quit playing that night because we had to... We had to then make a, a life choice on how we were going to proceed with, with, wow, um, were we going to pay? Yeah, we had to spend money at that point. We so, did. which, um, uh, like, I was super all about doing at this point. Like, I was, man, those the the dungeons were really cool. I don't know what I'm doing in dungeons. I can't lie. Um, and honestly, like. I, I'm way ahead of this now, and I still don't know what I'm doing in dungeons. And I, I, I blame other people because they go so fast. And, like, you know, when we're in dungeons, we're, we're given a quest. And I have to read that quest. But, like, by the time I even accept it, everyone I'm supposed to be following is gone. And I'm like, well, dude, like, my brain on dungeons is just, it's just a mess. They're very stressful, but I really like them. Yeah, it it is absolutely ridiculous how fast the tank goes. It's the whole group. It's not just the tank. It's like I don't. They don't even give me a chance. You're the healer. He's the healer, by the way. And yeah, they I don't usually... even care. They don't care if he's with them or not. They don't care if they can be healed. They do not. And they don't even give me a chance to switch my spec over because I'm leveling as shadow. I'm not leveling as holy or disciplined because that doesn't, that doesn't do the damage I need to do. So when I, it's like we get in the instance and they're already pulling, like I can't even switch my, my spec over because they're already pulling and we're in combat now. So it's, it's just absolutely ridiculous how much they pull. And sometimes, <clears throat> They, they they keep going and killing stuff, and I'm looting, or, like, maybe... Same, because uh, I'm, I've, like, looting is a big... Like, I enjoy that most of anything, especially then. And they just... I didn't kill anybody. I just walked around and looted everybody they killed. And... Yeah, they just go so fast. It. And, they, and the, the I think it's part of it, too, like, the mobs die so quickly that I can't even cast, like... You know, I might get one or two spells off before the mob dies, and I'm not. I'm. There's no way I can, you know, actually put up like a debuff on them, or um, not really that there are that many debuffs and buffs anymore. But you know, I can't put up uh, like uh, what am I trying to think of? The one that heals the party members. Um, I'm just totally drawing a blank. But I can't even put up that spell to do damage. Um, if I if I was shadow, let's just say I was shadow, I couldn't even do that. Because I did, I did go shadow one time through through an instance, and it's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, and, and yeah, the 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 XP you get in dungeons is just absolutely crazy um, compared to what it used to be, and it just makes it honestly makes it really inefficient the quest. So um, uh, 
but but we didn't want to just rush through everything and do instances. So we are questing, and um, we're we're kind of doing instances when we feel like it. Um, there are a couple that like really stand out to me that I wanted to make sure uh, to do. There was I initially had the idea of like I at least want to get you into each instance once, and we quickly saw that that's just there's You're no way. You're out leveled, like, like you out level, yeah. especially because. After we hit level 20, you realized, like, once we paid for the game and we were we were doing it, like, uh, you did that refer a friend, we had to talk to Blizzard and get our accounts, and, like, once we got that bonus, and then we did an instant, it's not even, not even exaggerating, we level two and a half levels in an instance, and... Like, there's a couple instances per level once you hit, you know, the levels. Like, you can do a couple at level 16 or whatever. At like, 15, right. 16, 17, you can do a few. Uh, but, like, you out-level them in one try, and then it's not really lucrative to continue to do them. Right. There's There's this really weird feeling I get of almost dread of when I feel that I'm in a place that I shouldn't be like in the sense of I have out leveled this area. Like, so if, if I'm killing mobs that are green or if I'm on a quest that's green, I'm just like, Oh, this is a waste of time. (laughs) This is, this is time. I'll never get back. Even though I'm sitting here playing a video game, but it's to me, it's all learning and it's all new and it's all hard and I don't care. But like, yeah, I see I it can, as really inefficient. I can tell that when we're playing, you're like, all right, abandon these. Because, like, we take all these quests and then we go to an instance and we abandon them all because they're useless to us at that point. Like, Right. Yeah, we've out-leveled. But instances and dungeons, whatever, they've been super fun. And I, it's actually been really nice because I, I'm afraid, like, as a, as a non-video gamer, I am afraid of being in a position to be around other people because I, I, I very much feel like I hold people back. Um, because I, I, I don't do it quickly. Like I can't read the mini map. I fall down holes that I shouldn't. And then I don't know how to get out. Like, I mean, I, there's a lot of challenges with it for me and it really like the anxiety that I know that I'm playing with four other people on my team against five other real life people. It's just, that's not what I'm... I'm getting ahead of myself. That's my... I, and, but anyway, <laughs> like, it scares me because I don't want people to yell at me for being bad. And in my experience, that happens. Like, people can be really nasty when you mess with their video game time. <laughs> so, I, like, it, it really... But I haven't experienced that. And perhaps I feel a little bit more confident because you are with me and you are the healer. So you are responsible for carrying me as dead weight. If I die, you have to fix it. But even a couple of times, other people have helped me. So it's, it's been a lot nicer than I expected when I found out that I was going to be playing real people and wasting other people's time. I think once you get into the higher levels that may surface more because these are people that are maybe more experienced and they assume you're experienced as well and and they just they expect don't realize more. I level 6 levels a day doing nothing <laughs> I haven't actually learned anything but I'm I'm six levels you're, higher than you've I should learned, be. You've learned a ton. And we even just went over some of your stuff last night that I think is going to help you. <clears throat> so we did do, as she mentioned, we did Rage Fire, Chasm, Chasm, Chasm. Uh, Chasm. And we did Wailing Caverns, which Wailing Caverns, um, that was pretty long. Like, um, can compared to Rage Fire. And then we also did Shadow Fang Keep. Shadow Fang Keep was always really cool. I always liked that one a lot. And then, um, and, and also just though you did not fall, uh, in, in Wailing Caverns, if, if you guys oh, play Oh, is that WoW, the one with the, with the thing I'm supposed to jump over at the end? Yeah, there's kind of a hidden jump towards the end. It's not right at the end, but it, it's, it's probably about 75% through. And, you know, you can easily fall. Like, it's a, a blind 
gap, kind of. And so I told you you had to jump, though, and you didn't miss it either time. So Yeah, and actually, that first time you said, hey, coming up in a little bit, there's going to be a thing you have to jump over. You weren't like, I just went. I didn't even, like, wait for you. I didn't know where, and I... I didn't fall in it, but you weren't right with me. And then the second time we did it, I remembered where it was, which is impressive. Like, I think people might underestimate my, like, lack of ability to play video games. Like, I am (laughs) not good. So the fact that I retained that there was a a thing that I could hurt myself on, like... It's not even so much hurting. It's like, ugh, I gotta run back. And that's the, like, I just want to quit. Like, if... I just don't want to play when I can't find my way or like I know that I have a long distance to travel (laughs) like I don't want to do it because I'm not like I don't know what it is about mini maps Uh, they're just not something I'm great at probably because I'm a millennial and I have GPS like you're supposed to tell me when I turn left and right (laughs) like maybe that's my hang up I don't want to be classified as a millennial I don't like that but I am Maybe that's why I can't read maps in games, because I don't know how to read maps in real life. I do. I'm just kidding. All right. Let's, uh, so we're going to move on from the instances. Yeah. Um, so back at 16, we got travel form. You got to, you got to ride my, my moose. Okay. Right. Continue. We, we you did get go to, to Ratchet. Now that um, we, we didn't really do much in Ratchet. Um, I think we did one or two quests, but we instantly learned that we were over leveled. And I thought, well, it's, it's silly to quest here. So we went ahead and went to headed to Ashenvale, which is north of Crossroads. It's uh, north of, uh, I guess, even North Barron. So Ashenvale is a different zone. Uh, Ashenvale is a night elf, very heavily forested area. And we headed up there. And um, I think we did do some quests along the way that actually took us into there. I, I remember there was a uh, there was an orc camp set up right at the top of the barrens, and we were able to do some quests there. And that's actually the um, the Warsong Gulch entrance is right there, like the actual entrance. Um, you kids these days have all these queues; you can just hop right in. But back way back in the day, you used to have to like go to the entrance and that's where Wal- the warsong gulch entrance was mm. um and you had to you had to go up and either talk to someone or run through this little portal and when you ran through the portal it would cue you for the instance um so we went up there i think uh was it another kodo that took us up there i think it was so yeah, we ro- I, I think so we wrote a kodo up into that um there was another orc outpost who wrote it up there and <clears throat> we were doing some quests up there. Um, again, we're just going to briefly go over these. Um, I remember there was a quest where we had to kill these stealth elves, night yeah. elves, and they were almost impossible to see. They didn't have a, uh, they didn't have like a nameplate over them either because they were stealthed. So I started just like spamming tab. I remember to try to find these guys. And, I, and that helped a lot because you could run right past them and they blend in so well. So uh, you had to kill, I want to say, like 15. I want to say they're like Outriders or something like that. They um, were, I think they were called Ashenville Outrunners, I think. That, no, that sounds very accurate. So I remember having issues with that. And then you were, uh, so this is where we were trying to get our accounts linked. I forgot to do the refer a friend and I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I did that. And I, I'm not going to get into all the details, but we were having a lot of issues um, with her account getting linked because they were saying it was older than it actually was. But it ended up being older. But anyway, we did finally get them linked. But while she's talking to this GM, uh, the Stone Talon mob just kept coming up. Like she she picked a bad spot to stop. She was kind of off to the side, but she was on the path of this quest mob. And the quest mobs spawn very frequently because a lot of people need to kill them. So they want to be available. Um, they want to be, you know, alive and ready for the next person to kill them. You don't want to get there and then like, oh, the other group just killed him. So I got to wait here for five minutes. And honestly, that's kind of how it used to be. You'd have to wait a good like three or four minutes, I'd say. And um, 
Maybe not that long, but this th- these respawn very frequently. So the Stone Talon mob keeps coming over and, and uh, killing her or, or attacking her, and she's having trouble trying to type messages to the GM back and forth and the Stone Talon mob attacking her. So she's having to stop and kill it, but then it keeps coming back. Yeah, this is uh, a blur to me because that whole, like, not only was I playing the game, but, like, I was trying to make sense of the super convoluted situation with Blizzard and then like I'm really paying attention to what the GM was saying and Brett's like just 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 you gotta look you gotta look and I'm like what what am I doing like it was that was a mess I don't even I couldn't have even told you what was attacking or what was happening because that was just such a a, a a weird series of events all at the same time and it was awful we made it out alive with our yes. accounts linked Yes, eventually. And we also had this, I want to touch on this other, what I thought was a terrible quest. It seemed cool at first, but we had to throw, so we had to go back in the Ashevale out the the outpost. Um, you had to go in the very back of this cave, and I, I guess you're talking to like an orc warlock, and he turns you into um, an imp, and then he tells you to go out and use your imp powers, and you know, there is this battle going on right outside, and use your imp powers on this. And it just, um, it was awful trying to like kill all these things. And I think one of your powers had this really long cooldown and you had to aim them pretty precisely because if you didn't, the, the giant, you had to kill these giants and they would just kind of walk away from it. So it was really difficult to get your, your spells, uh, in, in order to kill the giants. Um, I remember we happened to see another person that was helping with that was also doing the quest and we invited them. So we stood on one side of the tower or or a tower on the left. They stood on a tower on the right and their stuff counted for us. And yeah, that, that was that was really tough because I like get the response. I was like, you threw you threw the bomb into a mob of people. But by the time the bomb went off, the mob of people had dispersed. Right. And then the cooldown was so uh, it was it was just a pain because like you would set it up to to hurt a bunch of people and then it would just end up giving you like two of what you needed. That was a pain. I didn't like that. Yeah. Not not a good quest. Um so we headed up to Zoram Strand, which is the northwest uh hub quest hub of Ashenvale. And I think we were able to fl- just fly up there. I don't think we had to run. I'm I'm positive we didn't have to run up there. So uh, we were able to just fly up there. I think that was just a uh, a flight path that was given to us already. And we got up there, and um, I believe the entrance to Black Fathom Deeps is up there. And uh, we didn't then go to the entrance, but I did see that we can queue, and I was still kind of in this mindset of like, hey, we're going to do every instance. You know, we're going to do at least at least each one one time oh my god i just i just remembered what you're getting ready to talk about and it was awful <laughs> this was my least favorite time in wow so far yeah this isn't um and, and and like many things i bet i know why that this is her least favorite because um it's a lot of re it's the same reason that um a lot of people have uh have miss have least favorite areas uh least favorite dungeons in other video games too um so black fathom deeps is a uh an instance that is heavily um it has a lot of water in it and much like zelda um people don't like the water temple in zelda so this is another one that is uh kind of difficult because you have to swim and stuff's kind of hidden um there are dead ends um, if you fall off into the water, you kind of got to go back around and it's just, it's just an overall pain. Um, actually, there's been, there are certain areas where you have to kind of hop over, um, you have to hop over, you know, broken up pathways. And if you fall in the water, then, uh, it kind of, it puts you back. Also, our group goes so fast. So we were getting lost. Like I was lost. And then. I remember we even, we were lost for, say, two minutes. We could not find them. Then we see them, and we're like, oh, there they go. And I think we looted something, or, or I don't even know. And then they were gone again. 
Mm-hmm. And and we just totally like I was trying to pull the map up that wasn't really helping. I was looking at the mini map. I think even the tank had put a marker over himself. I still couldn't find him, and it was just a really big pain. Um, but we went into uh, we went into Black Fathom Deeps at twenty five. I think we grabbed all the quests, which were maybe three or four quests. Uh, so we finished Black Fathom Deeps, so and we turned in those four quests when we're done, and uh, we ended up twenty nine when we came out. So we gained roughly four levels, which was just, so far I was just like, oh my gosh, these instances are leveling so quickly. Um, And that was a big shock to me. Um, Yeah, actually, um, I didn't, that is not the one that I thought we were going to talk about. Uh, That is not my least favorite thing that I've done in WoW so far. It was a pain. Uh, swimming is hard for me. I'm getting a lot better at it. Uh, not as hard as it is in real life for you, because in real life, Brett can't swim. Um, <laughs> but in the game, um, I'm getting better at swimming. Um, it was hard. Like, I remember that I, I was kind of, that's not what I was talking about when I, when you started talking, but right. I do remember that. And I just remember, like, I was really glad that you were there with me because, I, well, it made me feel better. Like, it wasn't just me struggling with keeping up with them. It's like, to me, they're being unreasonable, but to you, they kind of are too. And that makes me feel better because you know what you're doing, and they're they're like, in your opinion, they're being a little bit ridiculous. Uh, like, and I think I even saw you like chat like, "Whoa, uh, race to the fin." I don't know. You type something silly, implying that they were in such yeah, I, a rush. I think I said I remember when instances weren't uh, weren't a time a speed run. I said something like weren't <laughs> a race to the end or something like that. Yeah, yeah, and. So it was cool because even though they finished, like, they killed everything, so we just had to get our way through it because, like... Like, like it's really just... I mean, it's it's not like it hurts us. It's just kind of frustrating, and, and it's it's it actually is beneficial to us in a way because we're not even, like, really having to do anything except loot, and we we're getting... We just really are running and looting all the dead stuff. And, like, and you even said in the middle of that one, I do remember, you're like... I hope that they die because you're yeah, the healer yeah. and they weren't even like, <laughs> they weren't even on our mini map. Like we had to like, they were just so far ahead of us and you're like, okay, well they don't need me. I hope they die because they, they ran so far from the healer. Like they're very confident in what they're doing. Yeah, but they didn't, they didn't like they die. handled it. <laughs> they handled it. So it's just like, well, why even cute? Like, I was thinking, like, do I even need a Q as a healer? Like, what if I just queued his damage and, like, threw out a heal every once in a while, like, on a boss? You know, like, maybe that would... Maybe that... Like, my Vampiric Touch, that's what I couldn't remember. But uh, that spell from before. Like, if I if my Vampiric Touch could just heal enough to, you know, keep them alive, but... So, um, them... So, this is how this happened. Um, we, we did Black Fathom Deeps... Uh, And we we noticed that we were way behind doing our thing. Three people cleared the entire instance without us. We basically, I mean, we were were little to no help. They left us in the dust. Uh, So we get out of the quest. And Brett has this magnificent idea that we could probably two-man an instance. You know, it wasn't even my idea... No, this, it, it appeared that way to me. I this, stand corrected. This was, uh, so I share an office with a guy that used to play World of Warcraft. <laughs> oh, And yeah. we had started talking about it, and he's like, hey, I was telling him how easy they were. He said, hey, you ought to try, you know, you two just going in there. And I was like, oh, yeah, like I can heal, and she can go in bear form and tank. And, uh... So we so we wanted to try that. Um, I think Scarlet Scarlet Monastery or Scarlet Halls um, was available to us. So um, we had to make the trip over. That that's not an, a hard one to get to. Like that's uh, northeast of Undercity. So we took the Zeppelin over to Undercity, and 
we headed up there because we could queue for it. But if you queued for it, you got put in a group with, you know, three other people. So we'd be at a five man and we didn't want that. We wanted to try to two man this. So we get up there and finally make it in. And I realized that this instance has changed. <laughs> I don't really remember exactly what it was, but that's not how I remember it. So, um, I guess I go holy and she goes, I think I tried to heal her through cat form, but that didn't work. And then I think we tried to switch where she was tanking and I was doing damage. Um, but finally the best thing that worked was when she was tanking and I was healing just like kind of a normal thing. And we were able to, uh, make it through the first few mobs. We got to the first boss and the first boss was, uh, was something a little bit different. Uh, we definitely died a few times we first. We did. And actually, Brett, I think that we... You were intending upon us going into Scarlet Halls, but I don't think that's where we went first. It's not. I think we went into Scarlet... Monastery first, I want to say. And um, we, like, and it was, inst- like, in the doorway yes, died. Yes, many everything, times. Everything was on fire. And there were ghosts and, like, zombies and uh yeah we did we tried to pull um yeah we tried to pull the group to the left and it just didn't work so we would run back out of the instance sometimes one of us would die and the other one wouldn't die and um she's right we did go to that first and then we finally went to the lower one which was scarlet halls and uh we were still kind of having trouble with that but we did make it to the first boss uh the it's like the hound master guy or no, no, I'm sorry. That's the second boss. The first boss is the uh, the archer guy. So he has like a like a cavalry of uh, wait, is cavalry only horses? Anyway, he has a lot of archers, um, and they're they're shooting at you, and you're supposed to. I guess the tank is supposed to pick up this this. It's a big archery shield. Tart. Well, yeah, it's an archery target. You can right click on it and pick it up, and then you move very slowly. So. Um, what I did is I had her go f- go first, and then we eventually kind of slowly learned, like, uh, she can't stand in the fire or she dies. Yeah, because and- they were shooting arrows with fire. So right. as the as these arrows would hit, they would set the ground beneath my feet on fire, and I couldn't stand in it. But I also right. couldn't move quickly. Like, this was very slowed down. Why was that right. slowed down? Uh, it's because you had that shield. That's okay. why it was slowed down. So so it was like, basically, I had to stand in fire, and he had to heal me until I could get out of fire, and then he could attack them while I would just keep going with the shield. It was super hard, and we died so many times, and I was getting so pissed. Like, I hated doing this, and I just didn't want to do it. I hated it. I do not like dying. <laughs> like... And it is not like me. If Brett dies in a video game, it gives him this like sense, like this need to to conquer it. If I die, I want to stop and go watch TV. <laughs> I don't want to die. It pisses me off. And he just was like so into it. I'm like, yeah, I was, I'm I was having furious. so much fun. I'm like, this is, this is the old wow. Like I'm dying in an instance. This is awesome. Like I was it, furious. No, I, like, like we're not speed running. Like this isn't. Twitch's speed runs through instances anymore, and I was uh, I didn't I didn't necessarily want to die, but I wanted it to be challenging. And granted, I think two manning uh, a, a an adequate leveled instance is probably a little bit too difficult. Like um, probably even harder than like a heroic. I would imagine now, like doing a five man heroic. We um, did finally get through. Yeah, that so we, guy we, on we just devised- our own though. Yeah, I kind of googled and um, found that someone said they could they could hit the archers um, without them hitting them. So eventually, just they stopped shooting fire, and eventually, just got to a spot where uh, she could just stand there, and I could reach them with my smite. So I just kept smiting. It took two shots for each archer, and I smited. I smited all of them, probably, there were probably 10 of them, so I just, I took them all down, and then, uh, then the boss actually kind of aggroed, and then he exploded her shield, and then we were able to attack the boss, and it was really pretty easy. So, we did two-man that boss, which was really cool. Then we kept going, and we, we got to the Houndmaster, uh, 
and the Hound Master just was not happening. Like we just could not could not do that. We we died about two or three times. She was already frustrated. I was like, "All right, let's stop. You're getting mad." So <laughs> we 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 ran out of the entrance, and I think we were going to leave. And there were two other there were two other guys our level, and they were standing right there. And I, I typed in a say. I said, "Oh, hey, we were we were trying to two man it." They're like, "Oh, we we were too." And I was like, "Oh, well, obviously, you know, we both failed. Like, let's join together." So we went in and four manned it, and uh, it was pretty. It was still a little challenging, but we were able to do it. And uh, well, we got to that last boss. Um, do you remember? We got to him, oh, yeah, and he yeah, was the last... super tough. And we were just like, "There is no way." Like, even two super good players could not have two manned this boss because, right. I mean, we all four died twice. And yeah, because then... he, he, he sends out this, uh, with his sword, he sends out this, like, uh, like this whirlwind um, of, like, this tornado that you have to dodge, or it will just straight, pretty much one-shot you. It doesn't hit you all at once, but it, it deals enough damage to take all your health away over time if you, if you get in it, and then you can't get out of it. Yeah, so um, we had a lot of trouble with that, and I think we had to do that about three times before we finally took him down. Um, but it was nice that we finally did. And I ended that instance dead, BT Dubs. I did not survive the last boss, no matter how many oh. times they brought me back. It was very tough. <laughs> <clears throat> so I'm not sure exactly. That probably put us somewhere around level 32 maybe 33 yeah we went into it at 29 maybe maybe 30 and i think we came out at like almost 33 okay so we ended up heading um i think we went ahead and did another instance and i can't i don't remember exactly which one it was it was actually it was scarlet monastery we did do that one yeah, in a normal we did group. It with we, a we regular cued. amount of people yeah, and the reason we wanted to do that one was because we wanted to get to our next quest zone, and that was going to be Western Plaguelands, and that starts uh, at 35. So the Western Plaguelands used to start much higher. If I remember correctly, I want to say Western Plaguelands was like a high 40s area, um, and then you would eventually kind of go into to Eastern Plaguelands, and, and that could that could level you up to the maximum of 60, if I'm remembering correctly. That was probably um, eight years ago. So if I'm misremembering, sorry. Um, so in, in Western Plaguelands, we, uh, we started out at the Bulwark, which was that area kind of outside of Undercity. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? So um, we, started, we started doing some quests there. And then we eventually... Moved over to Anderhall. Yeah, um, I don't know if that's and, nice. and that was like a little, a uh, very small town, um, kind of in the. I believe that was towards the middle of Western Plaguelands. And I thought this was really cool because we were we were doing these quests. They they would give us the quest in the the actual the objectives for the quest were right outside there. And there were there was this this war going on of like undead fighting like like zombies and other undead and and so it was it was really neat um, to see like all this crap going on and um, there were like mages summoning things and there was just a lot of action going on in this place right outside of Anderhall and um, I like that area a lot it's it's actually a little too busy I feel like I aggro everything like it's just there's stuff everywhere and um i feel I like remember... i do that a lot in the, yeah. in, in the area i'm <laughs> always bringing just a million angry yeah. people to you like help please help me <laughs> yeah yeah um so yeah there there's a lot going on and and if i'm again like if i'm remembering correctly i think all these people used to be like elite mobs right there um and and i could be mis mis mixing that up with a different area but um, you don't really see that many areas that are elite mobs anymore. Like, I don't even know if there are any. Um, I, I, I see some rare spawns sometimes, but I don't, and I see some quest mobs, and those quest mobs kind of act like elite mobs, um, but they just kind of have like maybe 200% more, um, HP. They don't really do more damage, so, 
Um, yeah, I don't really see any many elites unless I'm in an instance. And even those those, those instances, are the elite mobs are not that not that strong. Um, so uh, let's see. We had a quest giver uh, called Tira Deadweather. Um, so she was pretty cool because she gave a lot of quests that were really close by. I think she was in the Anderhall uh, mm-hmm. quest hub. Yep. And then, um, so we went out, we went out there, we had to kill some undead and, uh, kill some abominations, kill some skeletons, send in this, uh, like skeleton summoning portal. I remember doing that. Um, then we were around, I think we were about 39 at that point and we were looking, uh, the, um, I know it's not called Thanksgiving. What is that? Is it Pilgrim's Bounty? It is. Is that what it's referred to? It is. So... The Pilgrim's Bounty and World of Warcraft is kind of, you know, obviously their Thanksgiving event that happens around Thanksgiving time. And I was excited for Jess to see this because this would be her first kind of... Um, holiday. Ta- yeah, it was like a holiday. Um, when we started, the Dark Moon Fair was going on. And I don't think she really understood what that is. I she I never really explained it to her. So she probably still doesn't really understand what's, what's going on. But, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so the dark we did visit the Dark Moon Fair very briefly, um, but I've never been one that was too into that. But I think that happens every so often. You can go and kind of do your stuff, turn your stuff in, whatever. Um, but now we were doing Pilgrim's Bounty, and I said, hey, you can level your cooking pretty easily during this because um, there's a lot of cooking quests. And so uh, we noticed there were some turkeys on the ground because we were in Tears Fall Glades. And uh, we killed a couple of them, but we should have killed more because we I didn't know that they weren't like in front of... I thought they were just in front of all of the capital cities, but they weren't. So uh, we ended up having to come back here a little bit later to get some more. But um, we got really into these Pilgrim's Bounty quests um, for the next couple days. And... Um, we were well. They you, just. I was super easy to get into because I, we were leveling cooking. So if, I think I went from level like fifty two cooking to I think I might be level four hundred now, or at least three fifty. And it was all from doing Thanksgiving quests, right? Making chutney and sweet potatoes. Yeah. And 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 they position red stuffing. Yeah, spice bread. Spice stuffing. bread, and then using spice bread to make the stuffing. That's what it right. was. Um, they position these so that there is one item you need. You'll have a quest in one... There are people in each major city, and you'll have a quest at the one um, where you need an item from the other major city. So it's like you might need to turn in... And I'm sure I'm going to mix these up, but you might need to turn in like pumpkin pie and orgrimmar, but the pumpkins are from Undercity. So you have to go to Undercity to get the pumpkins to make pumpkin pie and take them back to orgrimmar. But in Undercity, you need like, you need the, the sweet potatoes from, from Thunder Bluff. So there's like this three way trade you gotta you gotta keep track of and well and you and I worked it out really well because I left um, Undercity my Hearthstone and you left I think Orgamar it might have been Thunderbuff but you left it another Hearthstone so like we didn't both have to go across the continent all over yeah. the place because we got to get what we needed and then trade and summon and stuff so that we we kind of cheated through it a little bit right so she had yeah she had hers set hers was set i remember to the bulwark which okay. was right so it was right outside under city and then i was set to orgrimmar and we're, we have linked accounts so every 30 minutes you can summon your 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 friend if they're in your party and your linked account friend so um we we did that, and, and we still have it set like that because that's a wise way to do it, to travel between the continents. And once we get out of Azeroth, um, I'm sure we'll keep one in Orgrimmar and maybe one in the the, uh, the other place where we're, where we're going to be. I don't even remember. I haven't hearthed in so long. Right. I don't think I've hearthed since Thanksgiving. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> right. where my hearthstone even is right now. <laughs> <laughs> um... 
That brings right. us. Uh, that brings us all the way. We've probably finished the Thanksgiving quest um, and all that cooking and little. Co- I mean, we did get the. What was that thing I got? You had to kill forty, or you had to kill so yeah, many the, turkeys and tw- the turkinator. Is that what the achievement is? I think so. Yeah. So you you ran around and killed uh, forty turkeys, but you couldn't let the the. You had to kill them all within thirty seconds. You, I think it was twenty. Okay. Well, you had to kill each one, and um, you couldn't let the, the, the timer expire, or it would reset. Yeah, so you, so ha- you, had, you had 20 kill- seconds in between turkeys before your count would reset at zero. Right, and you had to kill 40 of them. Yeah. And, and I remember doing this many years ago, and it was it was pretty difficult. Um, it was a little bit easier this year with my on the priest, but I remember doing it on a warrior, and it was kind of difficult. He told me it would take me... All night, and I was super proud of myself. I mean, I probably spent about 20 or 30 minutes doing it. Um, Once I realized, like, I mean, I probably killed 30 turkeys before I realized that the timer was even part of the quest. Um, And that's just, like, I'm not observant. Like, I don't know how to play video games. So I was just out killing turkeys because I wanted turkeys. and, And I didn't even realize I should have been doing something differently, but... Anyway, by the time this this whole thing was said and done, we were probably like level forty two or something. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and um, I really wanted to do. It said it. The game notified us that Skolomance had unlocked, which is a uh, is an instance. Um, I think that's in Western Plagueland. So uh, there's um there's five bosses in there and there are the like these necromancers that are studying and it's it's like a school and i think that's really cool and uh it was it's always been one of my favorites like it's probably in my top five favorite instances and i uh so we went in there and uh as always um everyone's in turbo mode and you know pulling stuff while i'm still like collecting quests and and Jess doesn't even know where to go, you know, like, she's never even been in here, and I haven't been in here in, like, you know, four or five years, but everyone just wants to get in and get out as quick as possible, and I guess I understand that, you know, like, they just want to, you know, they're just trying to level up, get to max level so that they can, you know, play, play the end game content, but that's not really what I'm looking to do here, so that's not what I like, um, was there anything notable uh, that you thought, anything you wanted to add about Skullomance? Um, no? I mean, I don't... Uh, other than the fact that, like... I mean, the instances, like, don't... I, I really enjoy them. I would like to do them. My only my only thing about doing them is that I, I fear that somebody will look at me and say, oh, she's a level blah blah blah, she knows what she's doing, and I don't, like, I don't. The only reason I'm the level that I am is because uh, we have this double XP and these special things, and, I, like, I don't, I don't want to be misleading, I don't know what I'm doing, and so I still don't, like... I go into these instances and I, it's fun and I, I, I get the concept in theory, but in practice, like keeping up and like, I'm just happy if I finish at the same time as everybody else. Cause I get, it's so hard, uh, to keep up, but like, I mean, nothing was different in school man's to the other ones. Like it was a challenge for me to keep up, but like, I do think I'm getting better at them. Um, I do think that there will also be a time, probably pretty soon, that we'll go into one and um, I will be considerably worse than everybody else uh, and <laughs> I'm completely unable to keep up. Eh, it's not a big deal. <laughs> um, so after Skullomance, that uh, put us sitting somewhere around level 44 and we went into Eastern Plaguelands. Uh, once again, I was excited to do this because the Plaguelands areas were um, were some areas that I really remember enjoying. Um, just the undead stuff, I really liked. That was always like a, a cool part of World of Warcraft to me. And um, Eastern Plaguelands has changed, though, um, as Western probably has also, but I really noticed it with the Eastern Plaguelands um, and again, it was like it, it's like they had shifted the the leveling down to um, 
down to a lower level. So um, it used to be 53 to 61, um, and really not even 61, like you would hit 60. I mean, back when Vanilla WoW, when 60 was the level cap, um, you know, you would just hit 60 and be done. And you would often finish up your leveling there. Like, that's what I think of it as, is like hitting 60 in there, or maybe even hitting 60 in like Winter Grasp. Like, I remember those things. Um, <clears throat> so in Eastern Plague Lands, um, I have a bit more detail on, on some of these. Um, so we can still, I don't want to spend a ton of time, but um, there is Augustus the Touched. Um, he wants us to kill boars and get his receipt book so he can open up his business. Um, his business is that he sells fungus. Uh, so Augustus sells fungus. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was that was a quest. And then we had... Uh, I think that was actually... I think I may have gotten that mixed up. I think that may have been in Western Plague Lands. Um, I could be mistaken. Um no, that is Eastern. I'm sorry, that's Eastern. So we, you originally meet up um, with this caravan in Eastern Plague Lands. That's that's kind of the big theme throughout Eastern Plague Lands, which was really strange. Like you could see it on the map. It would say, um, "Oh man, I forgot." Do you remember her name? Um, a Fiona. So it's Fiona's yeah. Fiona's, Fiona's caravan. caravan. Right, and that's sitting there on the map. And I I kept I remember I kept seeing that. Uh, when I would look at the map sometimes and I was thinking like, what is this caravan? And I was excited to get to it. And so I finally did. And she's like, oh, go, you know, look for Gidwin gold braids. And, uh, you know, I lost him. And once you find him, he's covered in spider goo. And you got to do a couple things for him. And he gets out of the spider goo. And then you can move on uh, with the caravan. And the caravan is like a two or three minute ride to uh, the next kind of quest hub. Mm-hmm. So they've themed this Eastern Plague Lands to kind of stay, I would imagine, if we had gotten all the way through it. But since you level so damn fast, um, you don't get through all the quests. But you you take this to these different towers and you level as you um, – or you do the quest and then you take the um, the caravan to the next tower. And I want to say there are probably three towers, maybe, maybe four places in total that you go. Mm-hmm. Um, but we did make it to the first tower. And uh, that was a crown guard tower, and we had to um, we had to do some quests, and then uh, we had to take a <clears throat> excuse me, we had to take a sword uh, to Chromie, and when they said Chromie, I got very excited because I am very into Heroes of the Storm, and I don't necessarily remember Chromie in World of Warcraft. I know that she's a Warcraft character, but um, I never really played Alliance, and uh, she's a she's a gnome, so that's an Alliance that's an Alliance side character. And I knew she was an imp- like an important NPC, and she may have appeared like during the time I think the uh, like Caverns of Time. I think she was part of that at some point, but um, I I just really don't remember her. And then to see her there, I got really excited. Like ah, she looks she looks and sounds just like she does in Heroes of the Storm. And I mean, why wouldn't she? Like it's the you know the same same company, so obviously they're gonna just you know take her straight from there and be very true to like her you know her references and stuff. So that was really cool cool seeing Chromie and um, but but we had just we just kept um we leveling so fast that we just couldn't. We couldn't finish the Chromie quest, so um, we we did do a couple other quests um, where we had to find um, Carlin Redpath wanted us to find Pamela, which is his, uh, I think that's his niece, so we had to um, go down there and we found out that she was dead, which was kind of sad, And mm-hmm. but she wanted us to find her doll and her uh, her dad's hunting blade. So we went down there and um, we did that for her and brought brought the uh, hunting blade back up to her uncle, and um, that was good. That was that was a nice thing we could do for the dead little girl. Well, and then, we also had to find um, her doll, which was in pieces. It was in pieces, yes, yes. And we had to find them. Um, we had to go in like three, I think, different little huts. To find pieces. Um, this was not a quest that Brett and I could do at the same time. I had to find it. He had to find it. 
which meant that when he found it, I had to wait for it to respawn, which, uh, number one, took a long time. Number two, there were a couple other actual players also yeah. doing that quest. So uh, it was an easy quest, but it was time-consuming and annoying because I knew where I needed to go, and I still couldn't do what I needed to do. And this was one, every once in a while, they'll throw a quest at you that doesn't tell you where to go. And I know that, you know, I know that all the quests used to not tell you where to go. Like, you know, that they have, they now have these highlighted areas on the map that tells you where your quests are. Um, it didn't used to be that way. And sometimes you'll get a quest that is kind of like that. Like, this just doesn't, it just says collect the doll. And if you click on it, it pulls the map up, but it doesn't highlight any area. So... I just didn't know. Like, I assumed it was around that area. I just said, find my doll. And I was like, well, I guess it's, a, I mean, it could be anywhere, but I'm guessing it's like in this area. And, and it was, but like Jess said, we had to wait. Cause there was a, I think there was another, there was a warlock running around. Um, also looking for the doll parts. So we had to essentially sit through three sessions of collecting three pieces. And, um, it took a while. Um, and then we did, we found this guy, uh, Kevin Frost was his name and he was in Plaguewood and, uh, he had three quests for us. Uh, there was the Scourge Mask, the Defenders of Darshire and added to the pile. This was a cool area. I think Jess really liked this area too. Um, this was an area where you had to, um, you had to do, you could do three different quests at once. And let's see, I think one of the quests was you had to find, severed arms mm -hmm. and you had to find some berries mm, yeah that was a pain and, and you had to find like skin from a gigantic foot yeah that was yes gross. this was fun uh this was especially fun because i got the arms before you yeah and but those, those arms were so tiny and they, blended in to the ground so well they were not hard to find Brett, they were. Brett, they were. She's lying. This is the only time that I have been the superior WoW player because <laughs> I got the arms like right off the bat. And at the end of this period, I was waiting for him to collect the arms to get the quests turned in. So I, this was like, I did this on my own. Like, we did this together, but I went and did it all. I didn't have to follow him and loot what he did. Like, I, I was capable of doing all three of these quests at the same time faster than him. So, when it was all said and done, I was super excited. I did enjoy this little part. Yeah, yeah. So, we had to collect those things. That was just one quest. The other one, um, I think, was we had to kill the uh, the ghouls. And they had they had ghosts inside of them, and we had to talk to them and kind of, I guess, free their we had spirits. To release their spirits. Release their spirits. That's what we had to do. And then we had an atom to the pile, which that was the large abominations we had to kill. And then uh, I think we had to set them on fire. We did, which meant using an item, uh, which added to how excited I was that I was able to complete this on my own because I did it faster. I was able to find, like, the berries were kind of hard to find. Uh, the arms, you know, were, quote, hard to find. Uh, I had to use a quest item, and, like, I did it all by myself, and I was really proud. Yeah, you did. I was the one catching up. This never happened, and it probably won't ever happen again. <laughs> I'm sure it'll happen again. <laughs> so, um, next we headed to the Burning Steps. I like to call them the Burning Steppies mm -hmm. because of the spelling. S-T-E-P-P-E-S. -E um, <laughs> PP. <laughs> um, so, this was interesting. Uh, to, to get here... I was hoping there was a flight path. So this this the burning steps are located kind of the kind of mid mid south on the eastern not the wrestling territory, but uh the mid south on the eastern Kalimdor continent. And it's north of Stranglethorn, but my my hope was we could fly from, you know, like Undercity or even Stranglethorn. Um, but 
we so I told her I told Jess we would get on the Zeppelin and we would go down to the um we would go down to Stranglethorn and then we'll see if we can fly there. So we took the Zeppelin down to Stranglethorn. So now we're on like the the low like the southern end of eastern Kalimdor. And we I got on the flight path and I saw that I couldn't stop I couldn't stop in uh the burning steps, but I could I could fly through it. So I could so what I did was I aimed my path towards uh towards Undercity and just said, Well what if you do that stop at next location? Next available location, do you think like that'll get you that'll make you hop off? I was like, Oh, that's a good idea. And so I went ahead and clicked Undercity and I waited till I was near the burning step one to where that was the next one. I clicked the uh hop off at next location and I just kept going. So what ended up happening is Jess used her refer a friend uh summon back and summon me back. My refer a friend summon? Uh is that yeah. exclusive to our account? Yeah. You can't do that unless you have the refer a friend. Oh. I uh, just learned something new, everybody. <laughs> yeah, you can only do that I if you I thought you made a mistake. I was making fun of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can only do that if you've referred a friend. Um, so she pulls me back down to Stranglethorn. And then so we start running on our mounts. And and by this time, uh, so we do, we've had our, our 100% mounts, um, our 100% speed increase mounts for quite a while now. So it is nice. Um, I didn't mention that, but um, we do have our mounts and that's, that's nice rather than having the 60% mount that we would have had in old wow. And uh, so I'm like, let's go, uh, you know, let's, let's run there. And so we're heading up just North and I know I could have looked it up, but I kind of wanted to not. And I was just like, let's just go North. And then, uh, you know, we get out of Stranglethorn, and then it's like, uh, it says like entering Alliance territory or something like that. And so I kind of got a little bit nervous, and um, rightfully so. Yeah, and I was kind of like, oh man, this this kind of sucks. And uh, we just kept heading. We had to kind of head northeast, and I was trying to, I was trying to to get there, and um, we ended up getting attacked a couple times by alliance that were kind of hanging out in these we, we were i guess we were in the human starting zone i want to say like i remember goldshire like i've i've played alliance but very very briefly like i didn't get past level 10 on alliance so i don't really know where we were um i think we were by stormwind city though which is like i think stormwind is their orgrimmar oh so we were by their big city and um and we were by like one of the first towns they that they get to. So um we had we got killed a couple times by Alliance and then we had uh we had a guard kill us once. And then um What tripped me out about this is that um Alliance has a different language. I thought that was interesting. I didn't know that that would be a thing. So when they came up in our chat log, it was gibberish to us. And I assume we are gibberish to them as well. Yes. So I think Keck is LOL. LOL. It, yeah. And I think I think that's what it appears to them. So if you ever see someone just say Keck, I think that's LOL. And I think Burr, B-U-R, is their LOL to us. So if you see one of them say Burr, B-U-R, uh, that's them saying LOL. Yeah. I know that yesterday when we were playing, um, and that this is bringing us to a current time, we, we did the burning steppies yesterday. Um, but we were in this little, like, in this little section where there was a quest and a table is where we had to do the, uh, the sewing of our costume and we had to guess how much mud, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Um, there was an alliance person in there, and I didn't know, like, all I saw was somebody with the red bar. I don't really know, like, I just learned how to, well, obviously, because this is really my first interaction with alliance. Um, 
But I just learned how to tell somebody was Alliance, and I did not learn before I met this man. Uh, and I, I saw a red bar, and I went and attacked him. And then he didn't die, so I, like, I, pr- I give up pretty easily. Like, if I'm killing somebody and they don't die, I just walk away. And I walked away, and I went over to get a cast, and he came over and one shot and killed me instantly. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, that was a person that wasn't a computer. <laughs> and then I felt really stupid. And then, like, I respond, he responded. We were both still there, and he didn't bother me. But it was like, I went over and tried to beat him up, and he was just like, he flicked, like, I just, he flicked me like a bug. And just to prove that he could, like, he could have kept killing me because we were questing right there, and so was he. Uh, and I don't even know that you know that this happened. Well, you know I died because you had to res me, but, like, I don't know if you knew this whole sequence of events where I attacked him thinking he was a, a computer, and then he mm. came over and just, like, squashed me like a bug. No, you didn't tell and me why And then I saw him, and I was like, oh my god, he's gonna kill me, but he didn't. I think he was just proving to me that I was stupid. <laughs> I wish I could have told him that I didn't know who he was and that I actually am stupid. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, um, th- that'll happen. Like, it's just bound to happen. Um, but we were heading up to, uh, Red Ridge Mountains and it was, uh, or we were heading through Goldshire, it was. That's where we were. And we had to go over to the, uh, Nope, I think someone's knocking. Uh, we had to go over to, let's see. We had to go over to Red Ridge Mountains, and that would let us get up there. But we weren't able to get there because in Goldshire, there was a wall of mountains. And we were trying to get um, up to the Burning Steps, but we couldn't. So we had to go... Um, we had to go all to the, the way down. Yeah, we had to go all the way down and then over, um, in order to get up to the Red Ridge Mountains or to get through there. And then we finally made it into the Burning Steps, and we were able to uh, get up to. We had to go through Black Rock Mountain, and then um, let's see the Burning Steps. And then what's the? So there's Burning Steps, and then right above it is another fireplace. Right? Is that where we requested? Mm-hmm. Right after? Is, oh, that's Searing Gorge. So we needed to go to Searing Gorge first. That's where we were trying to get to because uh, that was the lower level of where we needed. Um, so let's see. Yeah, this was a really stressful time for me um, because um, I didn't know where I was. I didn't know how to really navigate. Um, I felt very... I, I, I'm still not really confident when I die um, how to release... Like, I know that I have to release my spirit and then travel from the graveyard to my body. Um, during this process where we were traveling through all of this Alliance territory, I was really afraid to die because I was afraid... We had been traveling for so long. I didn't know where my my spirit would rise and for how long I would have to travel back to find my body. Uh, apparently there are, like, little checkpoints, um, little cemeteries, I guess, where you... Yeah. Uh, I was just expecting I would I would go all the way back to where we started because... Oh, like, God, like in Stranglethorn yeah. or, like, Orgrimmar? Oh, God. Like, I didn't know, and I'm <laughs> just like, oh, my God, these people, if they kill me and Brett, then Jesus Christ, like, it's going to take us so long to get... Like, we had invested... <laughs> It took us, like, 20 minutes to run. Uh, It was awful. And, like, I was nervous about that, (laughs) uh, especially, like, because I don't know where... And Brett's like, Brett died at one point, and I I managed to be alive, and he's like, just keep going. I'm like, I don't know where to go. (laughs) Go on without me. Go on without me. I don't know where to go. I don't know where I'm safe. (laughs) I'm I'm so scared. (laughs) Like... So it was stressful. Uh, I remember when we finally made it to, like, a safe zone, I was like, oh, my God. Like, my head hurt. I was so nervous about running through there and dying and not being able to get back to my body. Yeah, it's uh, it's nerve-wracking. Like, if you know an alliance is around and you're just like, oh, my God. Especially if it's, like, a rogue. Well, Rogues. and it's, in the, it's not just an alliance. It was alliance territory. We were the... We were the the intruders we were we were the bad guys at that point like we were the minority and 
I'm just like, oh man, it was it was scary. It was stressful. I was very like I. I'm not excited to have to travel through any more alliance. So I don't even like being in contested territory. Like, and the burning <laughs> steps is contested, right? Well, yeah, yeah pretty because much, pretty much everything outside of like your first twenty levels are going to be really. This is my life now. Is contested now. You won't actually go into alliance. Like, like where we started, that was all horde territory. Like, right. If Alliance was there, they can't attack us unless we attack them first, I think. Um, so, yeah, you wouldn't be getting, you know, they can't just fly to our, like, level one area and just sit there and kill you over and over. Like, you just can't do that. So, and, um, you know, and th there's, you know, and that's part of being on a PvP server. Like, that's kind of expected. Um, you can go on other servers where it doesn't do that. But we're on Smolderthorn is a PvP server, so that's that's your WoW life. That's wow. all I know. That's it's been a learning experience. I think that we, uh, I think we've covered a lot today. This has been a very long. Uh, we we have. Um, I just wanted to also like, do we get on? Did you want to talk about the Syrian Gorge quests, or do you want to save that for next week? Or next episode, whenever that may be. Um, I think we should probably wrap it up because we, we, it's, I think this episode has been about an hour and 45 minutes. So, uh, we can save that for next week. Um, but now, now that we're caught up, uh, I mean, this has been a very looming, this project has been looming, looming over our head because we're progressing so much faster than we were level or you know than we were the opposite of that yeah yeah we were, prog we were progressing and wow way faster than we were producing episodes right and so, so we wanted to get this we wanted to get caught up so that because i would get excited to talk about things that we just did but we wouldn't be able to talk about things we just did because that's not where we were in the episode so um we're hoping that this will allow us to to get caught up and, and be um uh, be more uh, i don't know if punctual or relevant maybe is the right word well, for this and, and it'll be more fresh and more we'll be able to be more enthusiastic you know it's just uh it's current so it's going to be a better right. product um so this was a long episode but uh, we appreciate you hanging yeah, in I there I think it was necessary um and and it is going to change a little bit um as far as the idea of the show was to kind of detail some of the, the more prominent quests, and, and we can certainly still do that, um, but obviously we skipped over a large chunk of that middle part of Vanilla. It's not really Vanilla WoW. It's almost like, I guess you call it Cataclysm WoW, because, uh, you know, so much has changed f because of the, like, you know, it's the Azeroth world, but it's Cataclysm changed a lot of the quests, so um, it's not exactly Vanilla WoW, but... Um, now that we're caught up, we should be able to to give you a little bit better quality things that are are going to be um, more relevant. We've we've said all this. I'm just repeating it. So, um, is there anything else you want to add to this, Jess? Uh, no, I think I think we're good. We've got uh, we've got a Twitter up. We've got um, we do have Twitter. We're so we're at Stitcher. We're on SoundCloud. Yeah. We're on iTunes. We are so on. Oh, we're also, I didn't tell you yet, but we're also on Google Play. I just got the email a little bit ago. We're on so, Google Play. Well, it's like Play, what is it called? It's, it's well, the see, Google. Well, see, that podcast doesn't matter to me because I have an iPhone. Well, that's fine. But so it's, it uh, doesn't affect yeah. me. Yeah, it's whatever the Google thing is. Um, so we're on that as well. Um, so on, on Twitter, um, we also have a Facebook I think we have a Facebook too. So if you guys, if you, if you guys want to link, I, man, it was just getting all this stuff together was incredibly overwhelming. I don't even remember for, I mean, signing up for six or seven different accounts, like within two or three days was. We also have a Gmail, uh, where people can, you can email, uh, let us know questions, uh, if you want us to touch on something specific, uh, or address it, you know, if you have any, any sort of feedback, whatever, positive or otherwise, uh, it is, what's our email address, Brett? Uh, asraw3discovering at gmail. So. Easy peasy. 
Yeah, it's kind of long, but uh, I would imagine it's you guys the name know of our podcast. It. So, yeah, that's the name of it. Um, so on Twitter we are at Azeroth R. No, we're nope. not. No, we're we not. Are at just a rediscovering. A rediscovering. <laughs> just kidding, because that was the one I tried to use, but because I because Azeroth R is stupid, and a rediscovering <laughs> makes more sense. So a rediscovering. <laughs> yeah, I messed that one up. Um. Also, for this podcast, we are uh, recording using Zencaster. Um, we were giving that a shot. It uh, asked me to mention that while we were recording with it. So I'm going to follow the rules and do that. Um, this is our first time with it, so I don't really know to give it a yay or a nay. But um, it's a little bit different than how we've been recording. And hopefully it's a positive experience. And if it is, uh, maybe we'll stay with the service. So um, that's called Zencaster uh, without an E at the end. But there is an E at the beginning. Um, so we, we plug the, the Stitcher, the SoundCloud, and the iTunes. Any kind of ratings would be great. Um, and also we got the uh, Google Play. If you, It's not Google Play. It's, it's whatever it is. Um, check those out. Facebook. Search us. Like us. Share us. We appreciate being your WOW podcast, even though there are so many others. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully it gets a little bit, uh, it just keeps getting better. We're both new to it, so a uh, lot of lot of progress to be made. I think we're getting the hang of it. Yeah, that's all I got, Jess. Same, uh, same. Anything else? All right, guys, um, we'll see you next time we record. Should be soon. 